Hi, I'm Kenny Yates. Welcome to Hold the Hope. And this is part four of our new series entitled Church Under Attack. This video is entitled The Religion of Science. As I said in our first couple of videos that we've had, that from the very time of Jesus, from the inception of the church, we have been under attack by our enemies. They have stomped and stomped, but stomp as they may, they cannot, shall not, and will not prevail over the church of Jesus Christ. Jesus himself gave us a promise that the gates of hell shall not prevail in Matthew chapter 16, verse 18. In this video, we will deal with how astronomy has brought the doctrine of, of the church under question and even made it look antiquated and erroneous. Please turn with me to Psalms 104, 5 through 9. He set the earth on its foundation so that it should never be moved. You covered it with the deep as with a garment. The waters stood above the mountains. At your rebuke they fled. At the sound of your thunder they took to flight. The mountains rose, the valleys sank down to the place that you appointed for them. You set a boundary that they may not pass, so that they may not again cover the earth. Scientists say that the universe is ever expanded at an average speed of 73.3 kilometers per second per megasparsic. This is such a staggering number, you would need a PhD just to understand what they're saying, much less to calculate or, or try to fathom how, how fast the universe is expanding. They claim that the universe is filled with millions of galaxies in which we are just a tiny, insignificant speck. And according to NASA, the sun is the biggest object in our solar system. Its gravity holds the solar system together, keeping everything from the biggest planets in the, to the smallest bits of, of, of debris in orbit around it. The Bible claims the very opposite, though. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1 through 3 says, Long ago, at many times and in many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. But in these last days, He has spoken to us by His Son, whom he appointed the heir of all things, through whom also he created the world. He is the radiance of the glory of God and the exact imprint of his nature, and he upholds the universe by the word of his power. Now, according to that scripture, God claims to be the largest thing in our universe, and it's by his word, the word of his power, that everything is held together, not by the power of the sun or the, the um, gravity pull of the sun. That is sun worship. Look at Acts chapter 17, verse 28. For in him we live and move and have our being. It is through God who actually holds everything together. He holds our very breath. He holds our lives in his hand. And we live um, for him and through him and by him because of his power it is that we are alive then there there is God's claim that he created the sun and placed it in the firmament look with me please at Genesis chapter 1 verse 14 through 18 and God said let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. And God set them in the firmament of the heavens to give light upon the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness, and God saw that it was good. Here is what God said in Isaiah 44, um, verse 24. Thus says the Lord, your Redeemer, who formed you from the womb, 
I am the Lord who made all things, who alone stretched out the heavens, who spread out the earth by myself. God is claiming that he alone created, he alone stretched out, he alone finished the heavens and everything in it. It is done, established, and finished through God and God alone. God created everything that we see, everything that we know. It just didn't just happen by, by happenstance, but God thought about it, planned it, and created it. So, why would science deliberately lie? Well, the very simple, simple answer is, so that you will doubt the Word of God. Like I said, or like this series suggests, the Word of God, the church, is under attack. And they will stop at nothing to make us stop believing or make us doubt the Word of God. And thus, it will cast doubt. All of this will cast doubt on our importance. My importance, your importance in the scheme of things in God's sight. You are very important to God. You are not an insignificant speck on an insignificant planet in a sea of stars and planets splashed in an infinite universe. No, no, no. I repeat again, no. You are very, very important. You are very, very special to God. Please understand that an ever-expanding infinite universe not only makes you insignificant, but it now calls God and calls His Word a liar. It questions God's Word, His, His liability. It questions God Himself, thus rendering you unimportant. And without hope, without purpose, and without meaning. And without those three things, we are in despair. We, we, we have no hope. Science tells us that the universe is filled with millions of planets orbiting their own sun. Actually, within our galaxy alone, there are seven other planets. Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn. Neptune, and Uranus. Each of these planets supposedly has the potential for life. So, what is the definition of a planet? According to NASA, a planet must orbit a star, or, in other words, must orbit a sun. Must be big enough to have enough gravity to force it into a spherical shape. And the third one, it must be big enough that its gravity clear away any other object of similar size near its, its orbit around the sun. So, just to summarize all of that for you, a planet must orbit a sun and be big enough to have enough gravity to turn it into a sphere. And that same gravity must clear away all other objects of similar size, regardless of their own gravity. The Word of God said that He created lights, sun, moon, and stars on day four, but it failed to mention planets. The Word of God was pretty specific. It did not mention Earth orbiting the sun. According to Genesis chapter 1, verse 14 through 19, the sun is in the firmament and will one day not be needed anymore as per Isaiah chapter 60 verse 19 and Revelation chapter 21 verse 23 through 28. The Bible does not say that the earth moves around the sun, but on the contrary, it says that it is the sun that makes its circuit. Listen to what Psalms 19 verse 1 through 6 says. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the sky above proclaims His handiwork. Day to day pours out speech, and night to night reveals knowledge. There is no speech, nor are there words whose voice is not heard. Their voice goes out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. 
In them he has set a tent for the sun, which comes out like a bridegroom leaving his chamber, and like a strong man runs its course with joy. Its rising is from the end of the heaven, and its circuit to the end of them, and there is nothing hidden from its heat. The scripture is very clear there. No matter how you try to slice it, no matter how you try to dice it, that scripture is declaring that it is sun who is journeying through the heavens and shining its light and its heat upon a stationary earth. Here are some other scriptures for you to investigate. Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 5, Psalms 50 verse 1, Psalms 96 verse 10, Psalms 104 verse 5 and verse 19. First Chronicles chapter 16 verse 29 through 30. So according to God, the earth is set on a foundation and it has pillars. Look at Psalms, Psalms 102, verse 25. Of old you laid the foundation of the earth and the heavens are the work of your hands. Some other scriptures for you to investigate are Psalms 75, verse 3, Psalms 104, verse 5, Job chapter 38, verse 4 and 6, 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 8. God also asserts that the earth has corners, four corners to be exact. Listen to Isaiah chapter 11, verse 12. He will rise, he will raise a signal for the nations and will assemble the banished of Israel, gather the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. Also, I want you to look at Revelation chapter 7, verse 1, Revelation chapter 20, verse 8, Acts chapter 10, verse 11. The, the, the earth also has an above and a beneath. Philippians chapter 2, verse 10, Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 13 through 18, Revelation chapter 5, verse 3, and verse 13. Jesus also tells us to, to look up. He says to look up, and look with me please at Luke chapter 21 verse 28. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. How can this be done on a fair? How, how can we look up? You know, some, some people would have to look up while others may have to look down and others would have to look across. So it's... It's a little difficult for everybody to look up if they're on a sphere. Some other scriptures for you to investigate is Revelation chapter 6, verse 14 through 17, Psalms 102, verse 18 through 22. According to God, there's only the earth, the air above the earth, the firmament, and the third heaven where he abides. There's nothing else. This suggests that somewhere out there are aliens being some, some alien beings who actually seeded the earth and have been coming back, visiting, coming back, watching uh, mankind for thousands of years. So in summary, scientists say that the universe is ever expanded at a breathtaking speed of 73.3 kilometers per second per megasparsec on average. They also claim that the universe is filled with millions of galaxies in which we are just a tiny speck, while God claims we are the center of it all. Astronomy claims that the sun is, is stationary in the sky and it's the earth that is revolving around the sun. And again, God claims just the opposite. They also argue that aliens seeded the earth and we must prepare to meet them. Therefore, their desire is to find the creators who created man when God said that he designed and created man in his own image. But why is this so important? Could it be that they are creating a new religion out of science and that aliens will be the gods who seeded the earth and they are priming the earth for just such an event and instead of aliens, it will be demonic beings. 
the Bible declares that man is the pinnacle of creation, but with a tiny sun in a tiny earth in an ever-expanding universe of mega-gigantic suns and planets, it renders man insignificant. But here is the truth. You are important. You are loved. For God loves you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So God loves you. He died for you. God loves us, his creation, and he's coming back to get us one day that where he is, there we shall be also. Therefore, we must be ready not to meet aliens, but to meet our creator and our judge, God Almighty. Thank you so much for joining us in this fourth video in our series, Church Under Attack. I'm Kenny Yates, and this is Hold to Hope. Be blessed and stay blessed.